So another、um, very popular data graph is pie chart. Okay, pie chart. I believe most of you have drawn some pie charts in the past. In the past, a pie chart is just a circular depiction of data, and in which each slice represents the percentage of the corresponding category. Okay, so that means、uh, you have multiple categories. For each category, you have a few numbers of data, and then、uh, you depict each slice by increasing its size if the number of data points becomes larger. And eventually, the slice, the area of your slice, represents the percentage or the proportion of the your this category. Among the whole data set, so the best thing to use a pie chart is to visualize relative frequency distributions. Okay, it's going to help you give a very intuitive idea about what's the largest proportion, or what's the largest category in among all categories, or what's the order of these categories. So let's do an example. Suppose we have a survey in a city, and the pa- passengers complain about the royal systems. We see that twenty and two hundred and eighty consumers or passengers they have complaints about stations. One hundred and five consumers they have complaints about equipment, and so on and so on. So, what we want to do is to intuitively illustrate. The size or the relative size of each category. So what we may do is to calculate the proportion, okay, as the number of complaints over the total number of complaints. With these proportions, we may also calculate out of the three hundred and sixty degrees of the whole pie, which how many degrees should be occupied by each,、um, by each category. Okay, that's some calculations that computers can do. So let's skip it. Eventually, the graph that we will see is just something like this. Okay, it's going to tell us that for station, for complaints about station, we have two hundred and eighty. For equipment, we have one hundred and five. But what's more important is with these slices, slices, we can see. A rough idea about the proportion of each categories, okay, a relative size of each categories. That's how pie chart help us visualize data. It is used mainly to visualize proportions, okay. The last idea. At the same time, there is a very similar chart called bar charts, okay. So probably you can imagine instead of using a slice. To represent a category, we may use a bar to represent a category, and the bar should become longer if the number of、uh, if the frequency of that category becomes larger. Okay, so if that's the case, what's the difference? Okay, let's see here. A pie chart is very good in visualizing the proportions of each category. That's something we have、uh, observed, but. Sometimes when we want to demonstrate the differences among categories, then a bar chart is better, because as normal people, it may be hard for us to immediately distinguish two very similar, uh, two category, two slices with very similar sizes. Okay, it's hard to tell which one is larger if the difference is just small, but for bars, it's much easier. So let's see the example. Here we have the same data set, and we draw it as five bars. Okay, for station we have so many complaints. For equipments we have this amount of complaints, and so on and so on. Even though for equipments and personnel, the number of complaints is not very、uh, does do not have a huge difference. Here on the graph we can immediately know. Equipment、uh, is more a serious is a more serious problem than personnel because the number of complaints is larger. Okay, but if you go back to see the pie chart, it's very hard for you to tell from the pies、uh, from the slices 
that um, equipment and the personnel, which one is more serious. Okay, so bar chart can be used when you want to highlight the relative difference between uh, or among categories. Okay, here you probably has uh, started to feel confused because we mentioned two things that are very similar but different. Okay. We mentioned about a histogram. We also mentioned about a pie chart, a bar chart. Okay, this is the histogram we just observed, we just saw, and this is the bar chart. What's the difference? Okay, the difference is here. A bar chart uses non-contiguous bars. Okay, you can see there are gaps, non-contiguous bars to visualize categorical data. Okay, stations, equipment, personnel, whatever. These are no nominal data. Okay, there is no rank, and you cannot do any arithmetic on them. These are categorical data, and when this is the case, we use bar chart. When we are deal with quantitative data, like the fifty uh, meter grades in our first lecture, then we should use contiguous bars. To highlight the class intervals and the frequencies. Okay, so when you have categorical or qualitative data, you use bar chart. Otherwise, you should use a histogram. And the way for you to draw it is also different. Here, there should be no gap in your histogram, but for bar chart, there should be. Okay, so that's the main difference. The last graph that we want to introduce is the one that you may use to visualize the relationship between two two variables, and uh, probably you have already guessed what that is the scatter plot. So sometimes we have a sequence of data points, and for each observation or each data point, we have two values. Like here,、uh, we collected information about twelve houses. And we measure their sizes and the prices, so we have these two sequence of data, and we somehow may want to get some ideas about whether there is any relationship between these two sets of data. Okay, does that means uh, uh does that imply that when size becomes larger, it will also become more expensive or vice versa? Okay, so then we can create a scatter plot by. Taking the two numbers as x and y, and put that as a point into our、um, plan, and then we can create a scatter plot with, for example, here twelve points. The scatter plot that we will we are going to see would be just like this. Okay, you may verify that each point here corresponds to each house in the previous slides. What's more useful or what's more important is when we see a、uh, scatter plot, we will be able. To,、uh, typically, we will be able to get some rough ideas about the relationship. Okay. For example, here, it's highly possible for us to feel that there is a positive correlation. Okay, a positive correlation between sizes and the prices, at least for at least twelve houses. Okay, probably within this region, it's indeed the case that when size becomes larger, your price will also becomes larger. We're going to talk about positive or negative correlations later in later videos. But here, I just want to highlight that when you have two sets of data, or when you have multiple sets of data, typically drawing a histogram is a very good idea, because that's going to help us to feel. Whether there is a relationship, whether the relationship is strong or weak, or there's just no relationship between these two sets of data, that's going to help us a lot. Okay.、Uh, one remark: in general, relationships may be nonlinear. Okay, but that should be too hard. For us, we can only intuitively say, "Oh, it seems to be related." Okay, that's the best we may do. If we really want to investigate about linear, nonlinear, whatever、uh, relationship, 
There is a method called regression that will be introduced after the midterm. That's going to help us identify patterns for multidimensional data. Okay, so we have introduced several data graphs. We're going to do some more practices in class. Let's stop here, and in the next video, I will talk about some numbers to measure or to summarize your data. Thank you.